Hey, friends. Hope y'all guys are doing well out there. Uh, it's been a lovely day here. It is 5.44 p.m. Sunday, December 3rd, 2023. Ha! It's actually my dad's birthday. I didn't realize that last night till I was trying to do a video and I was doing this exact same thing. It was like midnight uh, this morning, I guess, or my last night. And I was saying, oh, it's the third. And it hit me. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. So, yeah, my dad would have been uh, 71 years old this year, this day, actually. So, happy birthday to my dad. Oh, it's so good. Good, dark, strong, and hot, right? So, I've been trying to do this video for a couple days. I've had stuff just coming up left and right, kind of hammering on me, and I've tried to get through it and everything. And I kind of started becoming excited about the next videos, because as I want to do a video, I need to do it then, kind of. Otherwise, I start thinking about the next videos after that, and I'll get out and from myself, and I don't have the right energy for the video that I'm doing. Until I realized here just a little bit ago that actually with everything that's been going on, it really is a good video to be doing. This subject kind of applies in a way to what I've been experiencing. So, things have happened. Uh, computer problems, issues with my truck tires. It's really slick outside and I, I have summer tires, so really bad situation. Problems with the GoPro. Uh, problems with my editor, problems with my computer, whole bunch of stuff that just felt like getting hit in the head over and over again, right? So, it, THIQs are what I want to talk about right now, and they're the brain chemicals or the chemicals that build up in the brain due to prolonged use of drugs and alcohol. So by the time that we've had our run and we start getting cleaned up and sober, we still have massive amounts of leftover parts of chemicals in our brains that haven't worn out yet. They take a lot longer to wear out than the actual parts of the chemicals that are giving us the feelings in drugs and alcohol that we've been wanting, right? The high, basically. So the high burns out relatively quickly and the THIQs are left behind. So if we keep dumping in the high, it stacks up and builds the THIQs. Now, in our brain, we have an area that makes positive chemicals, is what we're going to call them. They're neurotransmitters, they're endorphins, uh, they're, I would just say dopamine, basically. However, there are other chemicals and transmitters and stuff in there that do different things. So I'm just going to call them positive, natural brain chemicals. Then we have the THIQs, which are negative foreign chemicals that have built up due to the prolonged use. Now, once we, while we're using what happens normally in a day things will happen and when they do we have feelings about those things if it's something good has happened a particular positive brain chemical has been released from the brain storage area where it keeps these chemicals and it flows to a part that activates that feeling after that feeling's been activated, that positive brain chemical will remain there for a while, and then there's what they call an uptake system. It transfers that chemical back to the storage unit, basically. Now, as those chemicals are used and re-uptaken again, they will wear out. So there's an area in the brain that produces these and makes them naturally. And then they transfer from the area where it's made to the place where it's held. Kind of like a factory would transfer goods to a store and then the store would sell them to an individual who will go and use them basically. So that's my breakdown of the process. When we use, now okay, first in the store area, there's a person in there basically who takes inventory and makes sure that there's the right amount of product, positive, brain chemicals on the shelf that there should be to be able to be used throughout the day. 
Now, when they start to deplete, that person who's in charge of keeping a tally gets a hold of the factory and tells them that they need a new shipment. The factory boots up, makes the shipment, and then sends it out to the storehouse. And that's how it should and does work naturally. Now, when we drink and drug, and we put all these different chemicals in us, the, the little person in there that takes the inventory comes in and the THIQs, I had these pencils here that I wanted to demonstrate. I will use them as a quick demonstration, but it got so confusing so quick last night. These are the positive good brain chemicals, and these are the THIQs that are in our drugs and alcohol that remain after the high is gone and they build up. Basically, this is the storehouse where the little person with the clipboard goes in and checks, do we have enough of the transmitters and good chemicals we need? Well, when we build up a lot of THIQs, it stacks the storehouse like this. And the little per person keeping tally doesn't see the difference. They're all pencils. They're sharp on one end. They're dull on the other. They draw that's what he's looking for. He's not looking for the color, which would identify that it's actually a THIQ. Hang on, I gotta stop and start this. So when the little person that takes the tally goes in and looks, there's way, way more product on the shelf than is supposed to be there. And then also up here in the area where all the chemicals remain to be taken back up again, that's also just jammed and flooded. So the little person with the clipboard makes a note of that and doesn't do anything yet. This takes time to build up. So after a while of coming back and checking and seeing that the we're jammed, They'll get a hold of the factory and tell them we have way too much product on the shelf. Don't send any more. We'll call you when we need more. Don't know what's happening here. All I know is I have too much on my hands right now. and We've got to level this out because that's what our brain is very good at. Our brain wants to be level. It wants to run right, basically. So as we're partying and stuff, there are all kinds of processes that start happen happening that make us feel really crappy. The THIQs don't do the same jobs as the positive chemicals, so we start already experiencing difficulties in concentration, difficulties sleeping. It messes up everything from the way that we approach a problem or problem solve to our romantic and personal relationships, dreams, uh, appetite, Muscle fatigue, it affects a lot of different things because we're not getting what we really need. We're getting these little shapeshifters that can't do the job that we actually need done. So the brain is going to, it doesn't want to make snap judgments. It takes a while to take care of things. So while we're still drinking and drugging, we're, we're no longer really getting high. We're just riding the feeling of normal now so that we don't feel crappy and crash. And the reason for that is that now without the drugs and alcohol, the, and all right, so all we have now basically, because when the little guy saw that there was too much in here, we stopped reordering. So as these are used and they're taken up again, they burn out and they don't work. So the factory's not replacing them with any more good chemicals. All we've got now are the, the crappy THIQs jamming in here. So even when we get the opportunity to use something in a positive way, it's not the right stuff. And we feel really crappy. When we quit drinking and drugging, it gets even worse at first. And the reason for that is now we don't have the ability to, in an instant, right ourselves and feel better by using our thing. And we don't have very many positive brain chemicals left in the storehouse. And we won't until the factory starts making more. Now, the little guy with the clipboard, he has to come in every now and then. He or she, I guess we'll say, depending, right? So, all of a sudden, he's coming in every now and then, and there's only a few on the shelf. And there's no more THIQs, so he it doesn't understand why, what has happened. We don't have enough now to do the job. So, when customers come in, they can't, they, there just isn't enough. 
So little person makes a note and leaves. Doesn't call the, the factory because they don't know if they're about to get a flood like they get or not. And so they need to be sure which takes time. It can take months, actually. After, so in early sobriety, we start feeling a lot better first when we adjust our eating and sleeping habits. So we do start getting a lot of the positive things from the food that we've run out of. Like, for instance, the nine essential fatty acids. I want to do an entire video on that because a person can be eating lots of stuff, gaining weight, or losing weight and still not be getting the things that are basic that come in only a few food groups that we really need. S not to diverge onto that. So when we first get clean and sober, we start feeling better because we've begun to eat right. We're getting all these better vitamins and proteins and acids. Our sleep balance is a little bit better. Normally in early recovery, we're taking something at night to help us sleep because the, the lack of those natural brain chemicals will affect the sleep and causes insomnia and stuff. I plan to do a whole video about that because I have experienced sleep problems as well. Not only in addiction, in recovery as well. And I've come to be able to kind of fix it more or less uh, with practice. So eventually, after long enough, now, right, okay, right, right, right. So I already told you earlier on that I've had a stressful couple of weeks. Things just seem to keep going wrong. It has a feeling of not being fair and working so hard and struggling so hard and everything still failing or just being able to succeed and all of a sudden everything triples and now I'm back at square one. Now, that's okay. That's life in general, and I have the tools, techniques, and abilities to deal with that. I also have the brain endorphins and positive chemicals that I need to be able to deal with that. So in early recovery, we don't have those things. If I didn't have all of these positive endorphins, neurotransmitters, all the tools in the world, they'd help. They probably wouldn't do the job though, because when I become very frustrated, that kicks in the effort for us addicts, which is like almost for me speaking from my relapses in those areas was the feeling of I deserve this. Nothing else will work. I'm going to go get tore up from the floor up. Now, I'm sorry. I have to stop and start this again real quick and we can finish up. So it becomes a defeating circle, basically. The lack of positive brain chemicals and then the frustration and anxieties and stuff can cause us to go and get the medicine that we need for a temporary fix. And it throws the guy with the clipboard out of whack again. Uh, so that's pretty much what I have. I just, I like to be able to relate something that I'm talking to, to something that I've gone through and experienced, or even better, something that I've experienced recently that I can relate to the subject. So what will happen? Within the first month or two, the little guy with the clipboard finally gets on the phone to the factory and it's like, okay, I don't know what's going on here. I know you're probably just as confused as I am. Look, the shelves are empty. They've been empty for a couple months now. Fire up the factory. We need like, why don't you send me half an order? That way, if things do get slammed, we won't be too far over the mark. But I need some product on the shelves down here, please. Factory guy's like, all right, guys, kick it up. We're off. I need half an order, so we're only running this half of the factory today. Let's get this out pronto. Somebody call up the drivers. So they finally get started. And we finally get the first dose of real relief. Not this this band-aid crutch relief, real relief comes on the way. And I will never forget feeling it. Something about having hit rock bottom and tanked and having to climb out of the fog has made it so much more real for me. The, the clarity, the ability for cognitive function, the ability to, to pay attention, it's all stuff that just sharpens along the way. And at this point, that's where we first really start to feel it. I, my, my three month chip, 
So why is that? 90 day chip was the most monumental moment in my life because not only was I getting success for myself and that positive feeling of how hard I've worked and what I've achieved, I was also getting that first real sense of those positive chemicals coming back into my life. And from there, it just takes time. Human systems are different. We're all a lot the same in a lot of ways. We're all very different too. So time periods and stuff are based roughly, you know. I can tell you for sure by the first year, things are sharp. Life is really, really good by that point. It actually starts getting so good that that's a, the first year is something that everybody in recovery that I've ever known are very aware that that can cause a relapse. I've known people that actually go out and celebrate their first year by drinking. And it's like the only way that they could think that I've done it. Yes. Where's the champagne? And I can understand that mindset. I really can. So these are just little things that we have to be careful for. And in early sobriety, I feel that I was so fortunate to be able to make it conscious decision to feel the way that I was feeling as I was growing and compare it to just a little ways behind me really helps me with the future plans and, and that positive reinforcement for a happy future, which is what all of this comes to. It's worth the work. Everything that we want, everything we desire, everything we feel like we, we should have had but didn't, we can get. The, the sky is literally the limit. Actually, you know what? The heck with the sky and the moon. We can go beyond, you know? Interesting piece of scientific fact and something I reminded myself of here recently. In order to get to the moon, we don't need enough rocket juice to actually power ourselves all the way there. In order to get to the moon, we only have to get halfway there. And then the moon's gravity will do the rest and pull us the rest of the way in. And I think that in lots of ways, life is like that. The acceptance of life, the, the thirst for life. If we just give half of the energy, things start coming back, you know. And it's not some, I don't know, hocus pocus, hooky pooky BS. It's just the way that life seems to generally work, you know. Like they say, it works if we work it. And we're all worth it. I think that's a good place to end the video. As I'm talking, I'm wanting to do flashbacks to uh, the different difficulties I've overcome here recently. Or we'll just call them frustrations. I don't know if it'll work out in the edit. If it does, cool. If not, A. So thanks for being there, friends. Really appreciate you so much. You're such an important part of my life. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. Thank you to all the old-time adventurers. Never give up. Never surrender because we're all worth it.